What's going on guys? Just here on an exciting day. Today is the day that I am planning to wrap up the powertrain and the initial operations of this go-kart. It's uh, been a actually pretty quick process, a few weeks of pretty diligent work, but we've got the batteries installed, all the series connections, BMS attached, all of it running to where it needs to go to. Uh, we got the controllers mounted and hooked up to the motors, which are also mounted and aligned with some custom sprockets from Sprocket Specialists. We are ready to get this thing moving. Um, right now the BMS is balancing out. I don't know if you can see the LEDs flashing in there. There we go. It's still in the process of balancing out the different groups. Let's check on the balancing while we're speaking about it actually. We now have a cell voltage difference of 0.031. That's an overnight balance. That's pretty good. Our lowest cell is 3.298. And our highest cell, oh that's good. 31 was the highest last night. That one's balanced out. The highest one now is cell 20, which is on this side over here. And that's only at 3.329, so we're actually quite close in voltage. Later today, I can get that plugged in and give it a full charge. It only got to about 108 volts as of last night because of the voltage reaching cutoff voltage before the other ones were. So we'll get that balanced. So far, the cells look like they're in good shape, and we should be all good to go. Highest group was a 0.1 volt or so higher than the lowest group. It's uh, obviously when you get pre-built modules, those are things that you run into. But today, I'm gonna be giving you a little bit of a overview of the detailed build of the battery, how to turn modules of lower voltages in series into a battery that functions as one. Um, obviously, in the weeks that are coming, I'll be releasing more of the controller attachment and programming overall build type of things. Today I wanted to focus specifically on the battery itself, and so that's what we're in for today. There actually was quite a bit here that went on. Effectively, I have the batteries separated out over two sides of the cart, connected in series with a lot of copper mass there to get the lowest resistance possible. And everything runs to the back where we have contactors, shunts, converters, all of the low voltage wires, uh, BMS, and that comes up the top to plug into the controller here. So it's kind of weird because normally my batteries are all encased in one location with all the components included, and today I've got it spread out over three locations, two modules on either side, and then the electronics hardware on the back side. So that'll be kind of fun to show you guys. The goal will be just to give you a full overview and hopefully some detailed explanations to help any of you turn individual modules into a functioning high voltage pack, whatever voltage that you need. And then following from that, we're gonna get into the operations of this cart. I'll have it running hopefully later today. I've got some parts that I 3D printed that will be for a lot of goodies. I'm gonna put a stereo system in this. It's obviously gonna be a little bit overboard but that's what this is all about it's all about the fun um so it's gonna it'll be just the a really cool experience to be in it's the goal but i'm pretty excited for it it's just one of the most exciting days because i get to go from weeks of just in some cases frustrating work figuring things out to i get to hook up the final controller wires and you know, gear selectors, throttle cables, things like that. And just get it on the road, get it moving, and then in the weeks that follow, I've been releasing on Saturdays for videos. I'll be having the videos coming out in each of the different categories. Obviously, Inja's gonna post one. That's the whole process, but I'll have some more detailed stuff, as you guys know, for each of the things that we do. All of the overviews of wiring, um, programming, things like that. I got a new display to program. It's the DKD, DKD I think it's called. Uh, it's an encoder model that doesn't require hall sensors for the programming of the speed. That'll be fun to, to show you guys. And just, you know, the stuff that I normally do, but we're gonna have some of that stuff coming out in the weeks to follow. So for now, let's get into this build and then I'll catch you at the end.
and the batteries are fully installed at this point. We've got the cage that holds them, uh, holds them very tight, very snug. I wanted to move into turning these modules into an actual battery, which basically means, as I've shown in the past video um, with that module I put a BMS onto, that I've got to attach a BMS that runs all of these in series and then monitors each of the groups of cells with a BMS. So I got a 32S amp BMS here. I'm gonna mount that in the middle. We'll see some footage of that and then run balance wires to both sides with some series connections connecting those two packs together. In order to do that, we have to know what each of these wires, which are the balance leads that connect to, you can see some of these wires running down. Those are in some cases temperature sensors, in some cases those are balance leads. They connect back to these and I gotta know which of these 23 slots, some of them have empty slots, but 23 slots, which of these are my nine meaningful pins per module, right? One of them is gonna be negative, the whole like module negative, one of them is gonna be a whole module positive, and then there's seven in between that are cells one through seven positive. And so in order to do that, I approach the same technique. So I measured my full pack voltage. Initially I got 26.2, it turns out that was a, just not a very good connection. It's actually 27 volts in the pack. This one was 27.7. Uh, but it's close enough for me to get my readings for this. But in order to figure out which pins went to where, you can see I took this screenshot, and there it is. So with the full pack voltage, 26.2, really 27.7, but 26.2 is my first reading. I split that into eight cells. Each of the cells then should be this voltage, this voltage. So if I'm reading from battery negative to one positive, I should get 3.275. From battery negative to two positive, I should get this. From battery negative to three positive, I get this. On down the line, right? So when I measure each of these pins, now that I've got this open for you, I can show you the process with two hands. I can just plant that in there, and that will tell me my pack voltage, 27.7. But if I start from the top left, I'll notice, oh, I get 7.3 on this one. I get 10, 11 even, 14, 6, 19, 2, 22, 1, 24, 4, and 20, wow, the voltage is going up, 28. <laughs> so I know these here. This whole top row, this one I didn't think I showed you, but 3.5. This whole top row is a connection. So what I did is I took this, and with my picture of this side by side, right, I wrote down the voltages that I got. I found which ones matched most closely to which section, so I could tell you that we had one positive was here, because 3.4 is very close to 3.275. 6.9, pretty close to 6.55. 10.4, Pretty close to 9.825, right? So I just figured out which one was which, two positive, three positive, four positive, five, seven, eight, and then one, it actually was out of order there. I assume there's also a B negative somewhere. So if I do want to use, and I have to actually for one of these, I've got a balance lead coming off for my B negative. So whatever my, my pack one, my module one, whatever the B negative of the whole pack is, I have to run and connect a wire to that. I could just connect it here, right? This is the negative discharge as a whole, but I can also, just switch my leads. Well, I guess I'll put the positive here. Comedy of errors there. Let's see if I can get this to work. I can put the positive there and I can find whichever one gives me a whole pack voltage, right? If I were to put here, it's gonna give me whatever 27 minus 6.9 is, which gives me 20 point something, right? It's gonna be the reverse of the original. So if I go and I know these are all my ones I've identified, I can just start on the next row and I can t figure out which one is my battery negative. Well, conveniently, the first one that I touch is battery negative because it makes the whole pack voltage from the positive to that lead. So this one is being negative and then it turns out these are all temperature sensors or some other sort of sensor. They all have blank readings. So for my needs. I just need that top row for three of the packs 
And then one of the packs, I also need this next one down to do the balance lead to um, the BMS, the first line from the BMS, the black line on uh, B negative. So I can connect that there. That saves me having to run an extra wire because these are long enough that I can run them all the way to the back of the card. I won't need another jumper piece to connect me straight to here, which I may do that, but for the most part, it may be simpler just to tap into, it would be this one, so this black wire on the back is my B negative. It's actually a great color because it's easy to keep track of it's as a negative. And I checked each of the packet, each of the modules to confirm that they were the same layouts they were. Finding the counter socket to this would be more work than I want to deal with. So what I'm gonna do is snip the first row off, which all have different colors. Some of the colors start to repeat. I don't even think that they used any sort of a, you know, there's no like stripe on there or anything to identify, but you can see these are just two like pinkish ones. So I can't just snip them all because then I'm gonna lose track which one's which. I gotta use my probe again to figure it out again. So what I'll do is I'll snip the whole top row. I'm gonna connect them to some quick disconnect eight pin things that I've got that I felt like was the easiest solution to repin this. I just gotta solder them together heat shrink it down it's a real small pin but it's no smaller than the bms leads are on so it's gonna end up being the right current capacity and then when that's all done i got those eight connected i'll cut the rest of them off just get a heat shrink shrink them all together get them out of the way don't have to deal with it so that's the simplest solution for me creating my own eight pin um, and then i can keep track of this black one because that black one for my first pack will be my be negative of the pack the colors on each of the modules are the same. So if you have a Super Beast um, headway pack, the 24 volt, screenshot that. That'll help you out. You know which pins are which. So during this section, I'm cutting to length and running some series connections between the packs on each side and then also uh, three cables that connect the two separate banks on either side together. Everything's either double or tripled up so we have the lowest resistance possible and don't see much voltage drop due to resistance in the cables.
this point I ran the discharge, this is the positive side, on the other side is the negative discharge, and ran those straight to the back to connect through either the shunt or the contactors. Here I'm connecting each of the plugs for the BMS balance leads that connect directly into the plugs I installed on the packs earlier. So that's the end of the battery build. Obviously you saw a lot of steps happening simultaneously or evidence of those steps throughout the video. As I mentioned, I'll throw up some more videos on motor installations, controller programming, all the other things that happen simultaneously. And we'll put those in at a future video and hopefully those are as helpful as this one was. Until then, I'll catch you guys later.